Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Pallet of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormbringer magazine. Now, as per usual with all these videos, if you like them, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, drop me a comment down below. I love hearing back from you guys, it goes a massive, massive way to helping out the channel too. Now, this week, we're on issue 38 of Stormbringer magazine and we have a couple of items. So first off, our minis for the week. So our minis are five more of the Stormcast Vindictors. Obviously, this is a second unit, so you can utilize uh, both units all at once because they're easy uh, and it's designed to be that way. So obviously, we've already had five of these guys before and now we have another five. So if you went with all of them being helmeted first time round, now you can do them all unhelmeted or mixtured. Entirely up to you how you want to go about doing it, but five more of them means you've got plenty of uh, Stormcast Eternals to field for battles, which gives you a big bulky army. So really, really good stuff uh, and pretty handy to have as well. The other thing we get though is the double-sided battle mat. So we have a second one of these, so well another one of these should I say. Uh, so over the course of the magazine's run we will get four of these guys. Uh, obviously they are double-sided so they are printed on both sides so depending on what your terrain's going to be for battles and stuff like that depends on which side you're going to use. The idea behind all of them though is that you can utilize all four of them simultaneously to make one extra large battlefield and uh, yeah have a bit of fun with it that way if you want to otherwise though you can have your smaller battles just on one or combine two of them and have a slightly slightly bigger battle entirely your choice though uh, and depends obviously on the battle that you want to have anywho moving into this week's issue though first off we are actually greeted by endless spells so we get more of the lore and the idea behind them so endless spells are curious and dangerous manifestations of magic which leave many students scratching their heads. Fear not, however, in this lesson we will cover all you need to know. So, if you're not fully aware, uh, witch hunters of the Order of Azir are brave mortals who are devoted to Sigma. They are among the few who can, are capable of destroying and these dangerous spells and dissipating them and kind of, un, kind of changing the magic and how that works. Every Ender Spell though has its own rule set behind it, so every Ender Spell can do certain damages, it has its own war scroll, its own movement, and can also move at random as well. So if you are going to use these in your battles, and they can be quite fun, they're a bit of a neutral thing, and they can just be cast and cause a load of havoc if need be. So pretty cool stuff, and finding out some more of a lore about them is always quite interesting as well. So, you also get information about some of the actual spells themselves. So we get the chronomatic cogs, which uh, allow for time itself to be slowed down or sped up according to the will of any individual powerful enough to command it. We get Ravenex gnashing jaws, which are jaws that are conjured up uh, and can basically gnash away and everything like that. And then there also is the mention of the purple son of Shaish. So the purple sun of Shaish is a giant purple sphere wherein can be seen uh, the dread form of a skull. Uh, deadly amethyst rays blaze forth from this sphere uh, and if a living be being is touched by a ray, its spirit is wrenched from them. So a very, very dangerous spell. Very interesting as well. Uh, and so yeah, really, really cool stuff. And it's always quite interesting to know a bit more, more about the actual magic and especially the endless spells which were brought in during the Soul Wars portion and the second kind of uh, edition of Age of Sigma. Uh, and so yeah, happy days. So really, really cool stuff there. Moving on though, we get in more of a story. So we get another story, Blood in the Snow. So after chasing their quarry across the peaks and valleys of Ramat's spine, the Iron Fanes spring their trap and lure the Beast Claw Raiders into a deadly confrontation. So this is all about the Iron Fanes, which is obviously the, one of the newer Storm Hosts within the good old forces of the Stormcast Eternals. Uh, and you know, we're going up against the Beast Claw Raiders, which are of course the Ogres and part of the forces of destruction as well. 
and they have some cool minis not gonna lie they really really do so pretty cool stuff and we get a bit more information about them and how they utilize uh, their battles and go forth from there so a bit of cool story behind them guys which is pretty decent as well then moving on as per usual we get our good old sheet for the actual vindictors so this is our second unit as i've said before so this is entirely up to you how you want to go about doing them so you can have your prime if you wish to you can do them slightly differently so for instance you can have them like vindictor prime like this one's my one hey here and uh yeah entirely up to you though but really really cool stuff really cool minis i do genuinely like the vindictors i think they have a nicer armor than say like the liberators from the older sets um so yeah they're really cool and uh yeah genuinely good but obviously as per usual you can give them a unit name unit name their traits and such like as per usual moving on though we get information about the realms of course uh, and this is for champions of Ulgu. So you can use these tables to deepen the backgrounds of minis, depending if they're from Orgu or not. Uh, and if you want a particular hero, unit or creature in your collection to hail from Orgu, you can do, utilising all of these. So obviously, your D33 rolls for this one. So you roll a D3. If it's between um, 1 and 2, then it's a 1. A 3 and 4 is a 2. And a 5 and 6 is a 3. So... And then roll the second one and you can get your kind of your cross table on here if you want to. But yeah, really, really cool stuff and a bit interesting. Or if you really, really want to and you can't be bothered to roll, just pick the one that you think is the uh, best. So why not? You also get your creature origins and unit origins on there as well. So why not have a bit of fun with it? Make the game your own and uh, kind of tailor your army to your kind of head cannon in a way. So why not? Then we have our how to build guide. So obviously we've built these before for fairly straightforward. It's up to you though if you want to go for helmets or no helmets with them. Um, entirely your cha choice. If you had a mixture before, why not have a mixture again? Why not choose different ones to have no helmet on and different ones to have helmets on? And then you can mix and match them as and when you've got them all painted up and ready to go as your second unit. So yeah, you can have a bit of fun with it. Then you got your paint guide. So the paint guide is obviously carrying on with the standard paint guide for Hammers of Sigma. Um, obviously, if you've not painted your minis, you don't have to do Hammers of Sigma. Hammers of Sigma is just the generic kind of colour, like Ultramarines is the generic colour combination for good old uh, Space Marines. So you can have a bit of fun with it, do what you want. I mean, as I say, I mean, I do what I want on there. So what, last time I had Lions of Sigma, this time. I've got my own homebrew, good old uh, storm host. So it just adds something to it and changes the way your game works and your story works. So why not have a bit of fun? But otherwise, it's a fairly straightforward paint scheme. You're not going to have a problem. You do, however, get the how to paint the iron fanes, vote if you want to. So the iron fanes are red armored. Uh, they utilize Incubi Darkness, they do have some silver on there, and yeah, you can do that if you want to. Um, I do quite like their paint color for the Iron Fanes, I think it works very nicely, it's a very nice color. It's entirely up to you if you wanted to go about doing that though, so if you've not already picked your, uh, your Storm Host, you, know, you could always have that as an option, so why not? Have at it, have a bit of fun, genuinely, they look pretty cool though, so good times then we move on we get some more of the order tactics so obviously delving into how different uh, rule sets apply to certain minis we get information to do with the praetors so the praetors obviously are your stormcast eternals with the hellbeds um we have four of them you normally only have a unit of three so we have the praetor prime which is the exclusive mini for this magazine and we have the original three um up to you how you utilize them you could always have the prime in place of one of the generic free um which is generally how i intend to roll with mine so yeah you can have a bit of fun with it so you get information on how to utilize their orders you also get information of how to utilize zandaya's truth seekers and their orders uh so their high wounds flexible and they are few models so that is their negative behind it 
and it helps you win your battles in the long run so really really good stuff and obviously it is stuff that you are probably going to need to know if you intend to be a stormcast eternals player in the very very long run so happy days and then moving on we move on to our pitched battle for uh, this week which is a lord imperitant two sets of five vindictors five vigilors and four praetors going up against the alliance of destruction in the shape of the killer boss with stab grot 10 hobgrot slitters a second unit of 10 hobgrot slitters 10 gut rippers and then the beast skewer killbow have a bit of fun with it really really good stuff though but otherwise it's a generally nice battle as well so you can utilize you have your destruction territory and the forces of order are all piling in from the sides really and from the corners uh, and it is uh yeah fun times so good stuff there moving on though from issue 41 we get a glimpse as to what's coming up so obviously you can combine your battle mats so you can utilize those if you want to so three of them if you wish um and we have a lot of units to look forward to so as you can see on the picture here we have the spirit of Durthu or tree lord ancient if you can make it that way if you want to make it that way or get multiple we have some more sylvan f we have a Cadron Overlords, we have the Nexus Siphon and some of the uh, Domicile for the Cities of Sigma. We also have Squigs, we have more Forces of Destruction, we have some uh, good old Grots, we have Fanatics, we have Squig Hoppers, we have a Troll, we have, well, Molog's Mob as it is. Um, we have a lot of stuff for, to look forward to from issue 41. This is going to be really, really good. I'm not going to lie that is a bargain though the tree lord ancient um spread over two issues issue 41 and issue 42 no issue 40 and issue 41 sorry um when i get it right um is an absolute bargain two issues nine pound each in the uk um to get a model that is over 40 pound is an absolute steal and it can make one of three different models so you can make the spirit of Durfu, make a tree lord ancient or just make a generic tree, tree lord entirely up to you loads of painting options as well as its trees so happy days moving on though obviously next week is a paint issue that's it it's a paint issue we get Reichland flesh shade and we get a Cathonian uh, camo shade um yeah just two shades um nothing to write home about in all honesty the other thing though in issue 40 though is the spirit of durfu part one so this is just one of two um genuinely a super kick-ass mini um yeah i'm looking forward to getting it i'm slightly tempted to try and scrounge and get a second copy but we'll see anyway really really good stuff we'll also get more more lore history and stuff like that as well happy days anyway that is it from me thank you very very much for watching as per usual and i shall see you sometime soon bye bye now